Hi, I'm Ken. Through the Working Well program, we provide homeowners with the kind of information they need to properly maintain and manage their wells and enjoy a secure, sustainable supply of groundwater. Today, we're going to discuss shock chlorination. Shock chlorination is a disinfection procedure that is used to control a variety of bacteria-related well problems. Most rural Albertans get their drinking water supply from private water wells. Unlike public water systems that are regulated by the provincial government, private water wells are the responsibility of the homeowner. A water well provides a potential path for contamination to enter groundwater and the perfect environment for the growth of certain kinds of bacteria. Shock chlorination is an important maintenance tool that can be used to keep bacteria in check. Generally speaking, bacteria found in water wells are classified as either nuisance bacteria or harmful bacteria. Nuisance bacteria will not threaten your health, but if left unchecked, could plug up your well screen or perforations and restrict the flow of groundwater into the well. When this happens, you will notice a decline in yield and a change in water clarity, colour, odour or taste. It also means your pump will have to work harder to deliver water. That means more wear and tear on the pump and higher electrical costs. One type of nuisance bacteria is Gallianella, or iron-related bacteria. Gallianella are found in naturally occurring in the ground and feed on dissolved iron. The constant year-round temperature and darkness of a well environment also help them grow. A well creates a direct path for oxygen to travel into the ground where it would not normally be found, and since iron-related bacteria, or IRBs, are aerobic and need oxygen to survive, a water well provides ideal conditions for their growth. IRBs will colonize inside and around the outside of the well casing, and if not controlled, will eventually form a rust-colored slime called biofilm that coats anything it comes in contact with, including your pump and the screen or perforations in your well casing. Sulfate-reducing bacteria, or SRBs, are another nuisance bacteria that can thrive in the groundwater environment. SRBs are anaerobic, so they don't need oxygen to survive. They can survive underneath the biofilm created by iron bacteria. SRBs feed off the naturally occurring sulfur compounds in groundwater and produce small amounts of hydrogen sulfide gas, which has that distinctive rotten egg odor. Their presence can also increase corrosion of metal components in your well and pressure system. Sometimes a well can become contaminated with harmful bacteria. Estera coli, or E. coli, is a type of coliform bacteria that comes from the intestinal tracts of people and warm-blooded animals and cause sickness or even death if ingested. If E. coli is found in your water, it means your well is being contaminated with fecal matter. E. coli may enter groundwater from a leaking septic tank or septic field or through contaminated surface runoff from pastures and feedlots. Water wells are especially vulnerable to this kind of contamination during flooding, particularly if the wellhead becomes submerged. You should test your well for coliform bacteria twice a year. It's best to do this early in the spring, just after snow melt, after periods of heavy rainfall or drought. When you notice any significant change in water clarity, colour or taste, or whenever the well has not been used for a prolonged period of time. Simply contact your local health authority for instruction on how to correctly collect and transport the water sample, and public health inspector will provide you with an interpretation of the lab result. Water is considered safe to drink when the laboratory result indicates there is no presence of total coliform bacteria or E. coli. The greatest risk for contamination from harmful bacteria are in wells that are generally shallower than 50 feet, poorly sealed in the annular space found between the inside of the borehole and the outside of the well casing, located in well pits, submerged by floodwaters, have damaged casing at ground surface or have well caps in bad repair or missing altogether, in close proximity to old or unused wells that have not yet been properly decommissioned. Also, if the ground immediately surrounding a well is not mounted properly to slope away from the well, surface runoff can pond and potentially seep into the well. Wells that have casing stick up less than 12 inches above ground or are located below grade, like inside a pit or in the basement of a house, are also at risk of contamination. 
A well is like an expressway for bacteria and other pollutants to get from the surface into the groundwater. Once it's down there, it can travel through the aquifer and affect neighboring wells. Proper well maintenance can prevent problems to your neighbor's water supply as well as your own. When should your well be chlorinated? A drilling contractor will chlorinate a new well before they leave the job site. After that, it's a good idea to get into the practice of chlorinating your well on an annual basis to prevent biofouling caused by nuisance bacteria. The buildup of slime on the sides of your toilet tank is a pretty good indication that bacteria is growing in your well. You should also consider chlorinating your well anytime you have repair work done, whether the work is done inside your well, on your pump, or anywhere in the distribution system. Anytime you open up a part of your water system, you can inadvertently introduce bacteria into the well. You should also chlorinate your well after a flood or whenever you have your water tested and the lab result confirms an unacceptable level of either total coliform or E. coli. So, what's involved in the shock chlorination procedure? Although it might seem like a relatively simple process, shock chlorination should be done by a licensed drilling contractor who has the proper equipment and experience to get the job done right. Working with chlorine is dangerous and there are many risks associated with the chlorination process. Chlorine is a hazardous material and care should always be taken to wear protective clothing and eyewear when handling it. It is a strong oxidizing agent and is highly corrosive and can cause skin and eye damage or irritation to the nose and throat. Never mix chlorine with other chemicals, including ammonia. Vapors can accumulate in confined areas like well pits, pump houses and crawl spaces, making the chlorination procedure hazardous. Chlorine comes in liquid and dry form. Liquid sodium hypochlorite in the form of household bleach is easiest to find. It comes in 4 to 6 percent available chlorine strength but has a limited shelf life and its rate of effectiveness is reduced by about 20 percent per month. Scented bleaches or bleach mixed with detergents or additives should not be used. Licensed drilling contractors prefer to use industrial strength, 12% sodium hypochlorite or even dry calcium hypochlorite that contains from 60 to 65% available chlorine because it is a more stable and effective product. Drillers also have access to other chemicals and mixing processes that can be used to enhance the biocidal effect of the chlorine, regardless of which form is used. The chlorination procedure involves introducing a measured amount of chlorine solution into the well to kill off bacteria in the entire distribution system. This includes the well, the distribution pipes, and throughout the house and pressure tank.